to solve this beam problem. So here, note down the property of the beam is given there. So E I term, we are keeping it as thousand. In many books, you will observe that E value is different differently, and E value is given differently, and I will also be given differently. So if you multiply with that E and I terms, you will get that some value other than 1000. And here total length of the beam is basically 2 meter. L is equal to 1 meter here, L is equal to 1. Okay. And we are applying that point load 2P here, point load P. And the support there also is a point load that is upward in the direction. And we have one moment reacting there and that point B. Now, we have already discussed that if you want to solve beam problem or a frame problem, we have to solve f is equal to au plus fixed and axle. You try to recall that in a truss problem, we solve this equation f is equal to ku where that fixed and accent was zero. Fixed and accent term is to develop for a beam problem or a frame like problem when we try to reduce the deformations of a beam. Here we are going to discuss how the load is acting in a beam. So in a beam, load may act directly in the nodes like this, or load may act in the span. The load can be as a point load or it can be load. Okay. Now, if the load acting in the node okay, or in a particular degree of freedom, then we can take the load here. We can put the load here. Okay. Now, with the load acting in the span in between the node, then what do we do? We have to convert that load, either point load or if they load, we have to convert the load into the equivalent nodal forces. So what was the load acting in the span that we need to convert into our equivalent nodal load. So in this course, that equivalent nodal load we say is your fixed and accent. Fixed and accent in the sense there will be forces that will develop at the support. And there also will be moment that will develop in the support. Okay. Now, what are we going to do here? The fixed and accents basically, fixed and accent basically develop as a resisting force. The fixed and accent that will develop as a resisting force. So here we will write it in the right hand side. Point load, which is acting the load, which is acting the point, okay, that is your active load. So we we'll keep it on the left side, and that force, and the force or the load that is acting in the span, and we are converting into the our fixed and action. That fixed and actions will develop as a as a resisting force. That will develop as a resisting force. So we'll write it on the right hand side. Similarly, this K with the U term that also will develop one type of resisting force. Okay. So total resisting force that will act in that beam that will be your KU plus fixed and accent. Okay. And that should be equal to our force acting in the node. Or you can say the force that is your active force acting in the node. We we'll observe that in many standard book, the fixed end moment is given there. Fixed end moment that is given there depending on our load acting in the body or depending on the load acting in the span and the type of support points. If you have a point load, in that case, the fixed end moment that will develop that is PL by 8. And fixed in force that will develop that will be E by 2 here and this side E by 2. That will be acting upside. Now 
if the load is acting in that fan, but but not the center of that fan. In that case, you have to follow this formula. And similarly, we have to also calculate how much vertical forces is developing there. Now, if you have you don't have loading, if you don't have loading, then a fixed end moment that will develop here your W L square of 12 and this side W L square of 12. Okay, now if this is your anti-clockwise, this moment will be positive, it is clockwise, this moment will be negative in nature. Similarly, vertical force that will develop to W L Y to this side, this side also W L Y. So if we follow any standard group, we will get this equations to calculate your fixed end moment as well as your fixed end forces. Here for this case, we have point load here, OP and P. So fixed end moment here that will be your PL by 8, this side also PL by 8. And here we have 2PL by 8, here also 2PL by 8. And vertical reaction, that will be your, this is your P by 2, here P by 2, and for this 2P, here 2P by 2, here 2P by 2. If you add all the fixed and was acting in this common node, that is your node B, you can get that total, total or resultant forces, resultant fixed end action acting in the node B. Okay. Now, if we write it in a vector form, okay, if we write it in a vector form, we can write here, this part is for the span AB. So here you can see P load is acting here, P vertical force is acting here, and this is your 2P L by 8, so P L by 4, and this is also P the vertical force that 2P by 2 here that is acting, 2P by 2, and this is your minus P L by 4. Okay, so now here if you write the degree for down 1, 2, 3, 4. And fifth and sixth degree freedom of value will be zero because fifth and sixth degree freedom is corresponding to this one. Now, if you consider your BC span, the span this is span. In that case, this value will be zero. That will be an accent here at the degree freedom one and two will be zero. And this is your fixed end force, this fixed end moment, this fixed end force. And this is fixed end moment. Now, if we add this fixed end force acting, the span AB and the BC, we will get a fixed end force acting in the whole body. So, here this is the resultant fixed end force acting in the B. Okay. Now, if we see that we are solving equation F, that is equal to KU plus fixed end action. Okay. Now, if we want to see what are the resultant forces acting there. Okay. So here, so here, this F is corresponding to the nodal force acting in the body. So here we will see that what are the nodal forces acting. We have nodal force. Here, yeah, that moment B, PL amount of moment at B, that is corresponding to your fourth degree freedom. This is your first degree and second degree. They are third and fourth, and this is your fifth and sixth. That point force, that the moment here is acting in that fourth degree freedom, and this P is acting on the fifth degree freedom. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to first give. Here we are going to first identify the degree freedom. So we are writing the six by four, six plus one vector. And here in the F, in the F vector, we are, we are writing the active force acting in the node that is your PL by that is your that is your PL in the fourth degree freedom and P at fifth degree freedom. Okay. 
and we have already calculated piston axle. So here we can put the value here and we can put the value here. At the end, we can calculate F minus FEA. Then we can say that it is F total, that means total force acting in the body, or the total nodal forces acting in the body. Okay. That we can write that is equal to AU. Okay, now here you can see this is known, this is known, K also is known, only we have one unknown vector, this is U. U we can get it by by doing K inverse F. Okay. So since this is known, this is known, we can find the displacement quantity from this equation. Okay, so what step we are following here? First, we are identifying our global stimulus matrix, and then we are identifying what type of load is acting there, whether the load is acting in the particular degree freedom or in the node, or the load is acting in the span. If the load is acting in the span, then we are converting into our piston forces, and then we are calculating what are the total force or resultant force acting in that body and we are obtaining this equation. Okay. Now, still here you can see we did not provide the boundary boundaries. Okay. So before solving it, before solving it, we have to apply the boundary condition here and then we have to do this operation. Okay. So here we will apply the boundary conditions and we will have to solve this one. So here we obtain our fitness matrix for the element and and if you combine you can obtain our global stimulus matrix so here you can see that so here if you want to obtain global stimulus matrix then you have to first identify what is the global known numbering? That is global known numbering one, two, and three. And you also identify the local known numbering, which is node one and node two for the element one. This is node one, and this is node two for the element two. Okay. Now for the element one, you can see that our global known numbering one and two. And global known numbering one and two. Okay, for the element one, our local known numbering one and two, and global known numbering also one and two. Okay, so what are the stiffness matrix we'll obtain here? Here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That matrix directly will come to the global stiffness. Here also, you can see this is the global numbering. Okay, so you can see. We just fill up to four by four matrix. Okay. Now, if we see, if you see the second element, if you see the second element, our global numbering, our global node number is corresponding to two and three, and local numbering corresponding to one and two. Now, global node numbering, that means that is our corresponding to degree freedom 4. Sorry, that is corresponding to our, that is corresponding to our degree freedom 3 and 4 and 4. The third node, our degree freedom corresponding to 5th and the 6th. And local numbering, that means our degree freedom corresponding to 1 and 2 and your 3 and 4. So here, if we write, one, two, three, four. Here also one, two, three, four. Now here, what have to do? You have to write global numbering here. Three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, if you want to fill this thickness matrix for the element two into our global thickness matrix, you have to see that this one one. Is corresponding to global numbering of C3. So here that 12 EIL cube will come here. 
similarly this one one two that will come or three four so here we have three four similarly three five three six okay three five three six that is our corresponding to one three and one four similarly if you see this row that is corresponding to our four one four one Local numbering is possible. Four one, this four one quantity will go into our six comma three. So here that will come here six comma three. So here next value will be here v i by l minus six l square. And this one is possible into six okay. obtain the stiffness matrix. What you can say our global stiffness matrix for the beam element. Now for for beam element. For the beam element, we can observe that element are connected in series. Element are connected in a series. Okay. Now, if the element is connected in a series, you can see that each element, or you can see the next element, next element have that degree freedom jump of two. So, for element one, we are having one, two, three, four. So element two, we are having three, four, five, six. And if you have the third element, that will be your five, six, seven, eight. So if you have third element, then your stiffness matrix will start from here, here to up to eight cross eight. So if you have third element here, third element corresponding to or fourth node, so here only corresponding to fourth node. That means you will do seven degree freedom and eight degree freedom. Okay, so that time we will have eight by eight matrix for a beam element. It is easy to get our stiffness matrix because we will are normally connected in a series. Okay, but if you have beam element connected in other direction, in that case you have to be careful and you have to identify that degree freedom. Okay, and you have to identify the node number and the cost of degree freedom to have our global stiffness matrix. Now we have. Now here we can see that we are solving this equation. We are solving this equation where this value was going to our nodal forces or active forces acting in the node, and this is going to our piston action, and this is corresponding to our global stiffness matrix, and U is corresponding to our global degree freedom. Displacement corresponding to our global degree freedom. Now. What are the boundary conditions? If you want to solve this beam problem, we have to apply the boundary conditions. Because so here, what we do, we are going to use row and the column and then it. So here, what we are going to do, we are going to first identify what are the degree freedom or restraint. So you can see this node, node one or node A, you can say having degree freedom one and Two. So this node one is fully resistant, and node two we have vertical degree freedom that is corresponding to third degree freedom is resistant, and here third node we have we have fifth degree freedom which is resistant. Okay, so here you can see we have resistant degree freedom are one, two, three, and the five. So what we are going to do? We are going to eliminate that particular row and particular column. From the stiffness matrix, as well as from our force vector. Okay. So now what we are going to do? We are going to eliminate the first row, the stiffness matrix, as well as the first row from our force vector, and second row from our global stiffness matrix, and the second row from our force vector. First column. Of our global stiffness matrix, second column of our global stiffness matrix that we are eliminating, and third degree freedom is resistance to third degree, third row we are going to eliminate in the global stiffness matrix as well in the force vector. In third column also we are eliminating, and here fifth degree freedom that means we are eliminating fifth column as well as fifth row. Now 
if you eliminate those degree photon which are rest and will have this matrix left. So here we can write okay? and we have this one is going to eliminate, this is also going to eliminate, this is also going to eliminate, and this is also going to eliminate. So we'll have this force vector. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we have to solve this problem E U. Okay. That is your size of 2 plus 2, that is your 2 plus 1. And here we're writing F total, that is your possible to F minus F and A. That size also is 2 plus 1. Okay. So this is 2 plus 2. We have 2 plus 1. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we are going to we are going to solve this one. Okay. So we are going to write the equation like this u that we call the kg inverse and here x total. Okay. Solve it. To solve this equation. Okay, we get the value of u. We are going to get the value of u. We are going to get the value of u. Okay, so here the value of u that is corresponding to our three degree freedom. So our three degree freedom is here, four degree freedom, which is corresponding to rotational degree freedom, and six degree freedom, which is corresponding to rotational degree freedom. So we are getting we are getting some rotation here. That is your positive value of the rotation, and this is your negative value of the rotation. This value is to come in a radian. Okay, this value is to come in a radian. So you have to convert it in a degree. Okay, then you also convert. Okay, so now here you can see this. Yeah, that is possible to put degree freedom is positive. Okay, so here we'll have positive slope and the global slope. That is u4, or you can write theta4. And at the six degree freedom, we have negative value. That means the slope here we are getting that will be your clockwise. Okay, now if you want to maintain that slope, to maintain the slope, that means the beam need to deflect in this way. Beam need to deflect in this way. Now, here you can see we are considering only two elements, we are considering only two elements. And we're getting two values. So here this is zero value, there is some theta value, and there is some again theta value. So what we'll get, we'll get some straight line. So we have only considered two elements. So we we'll get two straight line and we need to connect it. Okay. So if you want to connect, then then you will not be able to get the true picture of that reflected shape. If you want to have the true picture of the deflector shape. In that case, you need to consider more number of elements so that you can get some displacement here. You can get some displacement here. Okay, that is possible to some node number. And if you connect the displacement, to all the nodes, you can get the deflector shape. Okay, now since all our hand calculations, we are using two elements, you will not be able to get the true picture. But if you see that, you see that values, values that is coming between the fourth degree and sixth degree, from there you can guess that here the beam need to maintain this slope, so the beam need to have a displacement pattern like this, and here in the displacement like this. Okay? But if you want to see exactly how it is coming, then you need to have more number of nodes inside there. Okay. You, you, need, you, need, you, you need to have you need to have more number of nodes in between the in the span you should have more number of nodes in the span so that you can calculate the true pattern of the displacement. Okay, if you have more number of nodes, then you can get this to the set. Okay. Now so here you can see that we have calculated our displacement. Now here you can see since we are calculating displacement first, we are saying we will have displacement as number. If we calculate and and we are calculating displacement using equilibrium conditions, we are considering this force equilibrium conditions. Okay, so this is known as the equilibrium method. 
and since it involve thickness matrix, so it is known as a thickness matrix method. So this is our equilibrium method, this is our displacement method, and this is our stiffness method. Now we have calculated our displacement quantity. Our next job, our next job is to find the reaction forces acting on the beam. Okay. So we already know, we already know that we already know that equation F is equal to Q, that is equal to H, that is equal to KU, KU plus FEA. Okay. And this KU will give some reaction forces. We can write this KU, we can write this KU as FD, that is force developing due to the deformation. Okay. And this is your extent action. Now, if you want to see, if you want to see what are the reaction forces acting there, so reaction force that will develop here. Okay. That means our force vector we need to write. Or force vector in the right F plus F plus the nodal force already acting there. Okay. You can see that you can see in this F vector, you can see in the F vector already. We need to write, we need to write which is your zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, which is zero, this is zero, and this all corresponds to our nodal forces, active nodal force acting in the body. Now what we are doing. We are, we are, we are basically writing this F that is equal to force developing due to the deformation plus instant action. Now this part is already known to us. This also is known to us. Okay. This part we can, this part, this part we can calculate because we know Kg, because we know Kg and the U and this is known to us. Okay, this is already known to us. This part we can calculate. Okay, and in the force vector, in the force vector, the force vector initially we put this value as zero. Okay, okay. we only keep our active forces there. Now, now since some deformation occur in the beam, that deformations basically lead to some reaction forces. Here that we are writing in terms of F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Okay. Now we can we can basically get what are the forces developing due to the deformations. Okay. And that force will be from the now the force developing, force developing, maybe force developing, force developing due to deformation as well as which can accept. Okay. This F that is F we corresponding to force developing due to the deformation plus friction action. Total force, total reaction force, total reaction force, the total reaction force acting in the body will be equal to the force developing due to deformation plus friction action. Okay, so this part we can calculate. If we do this multiplication Kg times U, we can get that our that FD term is coming like this. Okay, FD term is coming like this. Now here, you can see this FD we obtained and this part FEA we have already obtained. Okay, that value will be like this. And you can see the reaction. Okay, that will be that should be this value. This summation of these two, this summation of these two could be the could be the this summation of these two, summation of these two, summation of these two is corresponding to the reaction force developing in the body, reaction force developing in the body. Okay. And here that is this value force acting in the body. And already we know this value is corresponding to we already we know at this we already know at that at that degree between four and five we have some nodal forces acting. Okay, so we are writing this is our this is our anticlockwise moment 100 and this is our point force acting upward. So we are writing in positive. Okay. Now, if we calculate it, if we calculate it, we'll observe that reaction forces that is developing, that is developing, the resultant reaction forces, the resultant reaction forces that is developing in the body like this. Okay. Now, here you can see, 
here what we are doing we are we are using our compatibility conditions and compatibility conditions is coming in terms of our u we are applying we are we are applying this u that u okay that is corresponding to deformations of current in the three degree freedom and zero value and and zero value on the rest of the degree freedom so here we are applying this compatibility conditions and we are obtaining our reaction forces okay now here you can see we already know how the beam is going to deflect we already know what the reaction forces acting there then it's been easy for us to draw our self force and building our diagram okay you already know what are the force and the moment is acting okay we can get our self force and the building our diagram so i hope you get some idea thank you till now what we have done we have solved this equation equation f equal to kg times u plus friction action so here what we do is this f here you can see corresponding to our active force f vector the force vector corresponding to the active force so pl that is acting at fourth degree freedom the moment here Okay, and P M on force that is acting at fifth degree freedom. Okay, solve it and we try to find the our displacement vector. Okay, now once we find the displacement vector, we can see now we can now we can replace the value of U and we can find the force developed. The deformation. So here we can write the force developed to the deformation as F D, and this part is called with our friction action. Okay, so now, now we are using these two forces. Using these two forces, we can calculate how much reaction force is acting or developing. Okay. So reaction force that will develop because of our deformation initially. We apply some load, and due to the loading, there will be some deformations. Because of these deformations, they will develop some force here, some movement here, okay, some forces here, some forces here, okay, and they also will develop some moment, okay, and they will they are also there also will develop some moment here. And some moment here. Okay. Now, the moment which will develop here, that moment will lead to the rotation here or slope. Here. The moment, that moment which is developing, that will causes that will causes some slope here and here. Okay. So though. So, so in the fixed, so in the roller support, moment will develop. That moment will lead to the rotation. Okay. Our moment will lead to our flow on the simple support case or roller support case. Now here you can see that force, force that is developing, force due to the deformation that is developing here is that that is developing due to that. Deformations, you can get it like this. Okay, and fixed and action already we know. Now we can calculate how much reactive force is developing the beam. Okay, how much reactive force is developing in the beam? So reactive force, the reactive force should be equal to the how the force. Developing as there should be U, the force developing, the force developing due to the deformation plus friction action. Now the total reactive force that will develop, we can take the summation of your F D plus A P A. Okay, 
So if A already we know, okay, and FD amount you have already calculated. If you add these two, okay, if we add these two, here you can see. We add these two, we will get a total reaction force developing in the circle. Now here, if you see the that that the reactive force vector as unknown forces, here we are writing the force vector as unknown forces. We are writing F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Now these are unknown. Now here you can see at fourth degree freedom, we have already some moment is acting there. So we are adding it here. And at the fifth degree freedom, we have some forces acting there. So we are writing it that plus it. So total force that will develop in the support is like this. Okay, total force that will develop is like this. Total force. Now, if we see the right hand side, if you see the right hand side, so here if we can add these two values, so here it will be 190.2, that will be your 55.4, and F3 will be your 123. And at your F4, that value, if we add, that will be close to your 100. Okay. And at 5 degree freedom, here you can see it's minus 14.2, and 6 degree freedom. That is zero. So six degree freedom here you can see this degree freedom is corresponding to our rotational degree freedom since we are allowing the beam to rotate. Okay, or you are allowing the beam to have a slope because of this solar support. So there will not be any resisting moment. So this moment is zero. Now, now here you can see F1. So F1 is our Support reaction. So here it will be 191.2. F2, there will be 55.4. So 55.4. F3, first will be our vertical reaction, 123. Okay, now here you can see whatever the, here you can see that F4, hello F4, here you can see hello F4 will be zero. Okay, the total moment that will act at the four degree freedom will be your 100. So here you can see, you can write this F4 dash, total reaction forces developing at the four degree freedom. Okay, and that will be with your F4 plus 100. Now, here you can see the value of F4 will be zero. So total value of the forces acting at the four degree freedom will be your 100. So this 100 basically, here, this 100 is basically your applied moment acting there. Okay, so F4 dash will be 100. So, this moment, okay, this F4 dash, this F4 dash, the value of, of this, the value of this F4 dash will be 100. Okay, that is what will do applied moment at your four degree. Now, here you can see. At fifth degree freedom, we will have reaction forces because of our deformations, because of our deformations, that is your 14.2. And we have already some value that is your 100 that is in, in the upward side. Okay. Now the value of the reaction forces at the fifth degree freedom, the of the reaction forces at the fifth degree freedom will be minus, that will be minus 114.2. So here we have some reaction forces, negative reaction is 114.2. So now here you can see, we know how much forces acting in the support. We know how much moment is acting in the corresponding degree freedom. So here you can see this beam is a okay, determined beam now. Okay, this beam is a determined beam now. Now since we know how much support reaction is there, how much moment is acting there, we can easily draw our shear force in the diagram. Okay. Now here you can see we have 192 vertical reaction is acting here. So now here, now here we will first draw 
the surface diagram on here we'll draw the surface diagram so surface diagram here you can see that vertical reaction here but the particle upward force vertical upward force which is acting here 190.2 and then to see that is your 200 losing acting there so it will go straight here and then there will be down on force of 200 now it, this will all be minus 8.8 again it will go it will continue okay here you have some upward forces so that is your support reaction so it will go upside okay so now this value will be 114.2 and this 114.2 will continue here and here we have 100 force uh, acting downward 100 force acting downward first thing to use go down and the value will be here 14.2 again we will continue here and here you can see the resultant forces resultant forces that is acting here here you can see 14.2 okay so 14.2 that is acting downside. This is also 14 by 2. So at this point, the value of that set force will be 0. Okay. So here, with this way, you can obtain our set force diagram. Okay. Now we'll go for bending diagram. Now already we know the value of the moment acting here is 55.4. Okay. So now for the bending diagram, we can consider the moment acting here as a positive this is a positive so basically if the moment acting like this you can see this is our positive moment so here you can see our hogging moment we are considering as a positive okay. so basically what we are doing if we consider the moment acting in the left hand side all the anti-clockwise moment are positive if that if you consider the moment acting this side from this side okay then all the clockwise movement will be considered positive. Since we initially assume that we will consider all the anti-clockwise movement as a positive, we will calculate all the movement from the left hand side. We will calculate all the movement from the left hand side and all the anti-clockwise movement we will consider as a positive movement. Okay, so here we have applied moment 55.4 that we have our developed moment, developed moment that is 55.4 that we get it from our calculation. Now, if you want to see how much moment is acting here, okay, so what we can do, we can see, we can calculate how much moment is, how much moment is acting there, that we can calculate this side minus 55.4, that is our anti clockwise moment, positive moment, how much moment is acting here, so that we can calculate as your 55.4 moment is acting there, that is anti clockwise, positive, and, and support reaction here, RA 119.2, so that will cause your clockwise moment. That will cause or that will cause as a that will cause as a that will cause as a clockwise moment. So that value will be negative. So 191.2 times 0.5. Okay, now if you do this calculation, you'll observe that value is coming and your minus 40.2 okay that will be your minus 40.2 now since we are, we are we are since we are representing positive moment upside okay we are representing positive moment in the upside so negative moment we keep in that downside so that value is 40.2 negative value okay. now here before to the support we can calculate how much moment is acting there okay. before to the support we can calculate how much moment is acting there that we can calculate again considering all the anti all the anti clockwise moment as a positive, all the anti clockwise moment as a positive. So here we'll have 55.4 anti clockwise moment positive. Next we have minus 191.4 times 1. Okay, that is your clockwise moment, and we have 200 times 0.5, that is your anti clockwise moment. So that will give our moment acting in that point B. There should be your moment at B minus. Okay, just before to the support. If you calculate it, you will observe that value is coming at your minus 35.8. So here we have minus 35.8. 
Now after the support, okay, we can again we can calculate how much moment is acting there. So that moment we should write MD plus plus. Again, we should write 55.4 minus 191.4 times 1 plus 200 times 0.5 plus the moment acting here. That amount is 100. The anticlockwise reaction. Okay, so that value will come as your 64.2. Okay, now here you can see the difference between this value and this value will be 100. That is corresponding to our applied moment here. This fundamental thing probably you also have observed in our moment distribution method. If some moment is acting there, then how much moment will distribute this side and this side that that we used to calculate, that we used to calculate. Okay, so here also we can get it from our calculus. Okay. Now if you want to calculate the moment acting here, okay, so that moment again you can calculate your 55.4. Okay. Minus 191.2 times 1.5. 1.5. Okay. And 200 times 1. This distance will be 1. And the moment here, 100 acting in anti clause direction. And you will have this reaction process here. So 100. 23.5 times 0.5. 123.5. Times 0.5. So if you calculate that value will come as your 7.1. Now if you calculate the moment from this side, so the moment will come as a minus 7.1. So minus 7.1 that indicates that moment acting is the clockwise direction. Now here you just see we assume the moment acting as a hogging moment as a positive. So now what are the moment we will consider from left hand side that all the anticlockwise moment as a positive, but if you consider the moment acting in the right hand side, then we have to consider clockwise moment as a positive. So here we got the moment as a clockwise this side. Basically this moment is pausing as a hogging moment. This moment is this moment is a hogging moment. Okay, so here you have to consider this will as a positive. So here then calculating that moment as a positive. So the, though the calculation so that minus 7.1, that minus 7.1 indicate that moment is clockwise moment. Okay, and this clockwise moment is causing okay, this moment. This moment here basically developing as a hogging moment. So we are considering that value as a positive. Similarly, if we calculate from this side, that value also will come as a minus 64.2. Okay. Again, that also you have to consider the hugging moment right at that time. Your positive moment here. Okay, so the calculation so negative value that indicate this moment here from right hand side that your clockwise and this value hugging moment, the moment which is causing hugging. Okay, positive. So here we can say okay, now if we the best way now now the now not the now the best way is that you consider all the anticlockwise moment as a positive and calculate the moment from the, our left hand side. So the concept we use that all the anticlockwise moment, all the anticlockwise moment as a positive, that concept still will valid and will not get into any confusion there. Okay. Basically, we are considering all the hogging moment as a positive. If you consider the moment from left hand side, then all the anti clock moment acting there we can consider as a positive moment. The concept we use that all the anti clock is moment positive still valid and will not get any confusion. Okay. So now for this problem, this will be our so now here we can see now really we solve F KU plus FEA. And from that, we calculate how much displacement is coming there. And once we know how much displacement is coming, okay, then we can calculate how much forces is developing in the beam. Okay, once we know how much forces, forces in the in terms of forces in terms of 
moment as well as your reactive force, vertical forces, moment as well as your vertical forces. Okay. Now, once we know how much moment and how much vertical force is acting there, how much moment and how much vertical force is acting there, you can say that beam is now determined. Now, once the beam is determined, now it is very easy for us. It is very easy for us to draw our self-force diagram as well as our bending diagram. I hope you get some idea. Thank you.